my fun-loving reading friends. It's Ani. Welcome to my house. Are you ready for a story? When it comes to finding things, Finnegan McPhee has all the luck. Will his luck continue when he has to face the ultimate challenge? Let's find out as we read Finnegan's Leprechaun Luck. If you have a copy, go get it so you can read along with me. Finnegan's Leprechaun Luck, written by Janelle Thompson, illustrated by Liesl Frankham. In all of Ireland, there was no one luckier at finding things than Finnegan McPhee. He helped Mr. McGinnis find a ring that he'd lost in his prady field. He helped old Mrs. Flannery find her lost glasses. He even found Mrs. Murphy's sewing needle that she had dropped in a pile of hay. But Finnegan soon grew bored of finding such ordinary things. I want to find something special, Finnegan thought one evening. Something challenging. Something that no one else has found before. I want to find a leprechaun. He set out early the next morning to search for leprechauns in the rocky hills just north of his home. He climbed rock after rock and searched hill after hill until finally he could search no more. The bright sunny sky he had enjoyed earlier that morning had turned to a dark and cloudy afternoon and the sound of thunder rumbled through the hills. Dear me, Finnegan exclaimed, I've lost track of the time. I'd best be getting home now before the storm hits. A giant raindrop fell from the sky and landed kerplop on his shoulder, followed by another and another and yet another. There was no way he'd make it home in time now. Finnegan ran inside a nearby cave for shelter just as the rain began to pour heavily down. Oh, made it just in time, Finnegan announced to himself. It's really bucketing down now. As he stood watching the rainfall, Finnegan noticed a slight movement off in the distance. He narrowed his eyes to make out the object in the rain and was surprised to see the shape of a wee man dressed in green approaching closer to the cave. Seems alive, Finnegan whispered aloud. I do believe it's a leprechaun. I'd better hide so as not to scare him off. Finnegan ran to the back of the cave and crouched down behind a boulder in wait of the leprechaun. A tiny pair of feet could be heard scuffling into the cave and then all went silent for a time. Finnegan carefully peered around the boulder to catch a glimpse of the strange new arrival, but was startled to find a small wet face staring right back at him. What do you think you're doing there hiding behind that rock? The soggy little man demanded. His hands were placed on his hips and his bushy orange eyebrows were furrowed deep. Out with you now! Finnegan did as he was told and stood in awe of the leprechaun standing before him. Glory be! Finnegan muttered at last. I really did it! I actually found me a leprechaun! And now that I've found you, I'd best be using me wishes for your pot of gold! Wishes? Ha! The leprechaun scoffed. I don't have to grant you anything. You didn't find me. I found you. I'm the best finder of all. Finnegan was stunned. Surely this was just one of the leprechaun's tricks. You little rascal, Finnegan argued. You found me after I found you. That makes me the best finder of all. Fiddlesticks. The clever leprechaun replied, The best finder of all wouldn't need to wish for a pot of gold. He'd find it. But tis a Spartan man I am. So I'll tell you what. I'll let you try your hand at finding me gold instead. That would certainly prove your ability. But it could be anywhere, Finnegan said. And how will I know that you won't move the gold if I be close to finding it? Simple. The leprechaun replied, I'll conjure up a rainbow and keep me gold at the end of it. 
That way you'll always be able to see where it's at. I'll remain at the cave, but after eight minutes, then the rainbow will fade. And with it, the pot of gold will fade also. So what's it to be? Would you like to try your luck at finding it? A rainbow to point the way? Finnegan paused to think. The little man had promised not to interfere, and with his luck at finding things, what did he have to lose? You're sure you'll stay here and that you won't move the gold? He cautiously questioned. As sure as a shamrock grows three leaves, the leprechaun replied. By now the rain had slowed to a stop, and Finnegan smiled at the little man's promise. Tis a deal you have then, Finnegan said. With that, the leprechaun walked to the front of the cave and caught the droplets of water that were forming on the rocks overhead. Then he tossed the droplets high up into the air, and the water's mist fell slowly down to the ground just as the first ray of sunshine broke out from behind the clouds. Almost immediately, a magnificent rainbow began to take form, arching high up into the sky and landing just beyond the neighboring hills. Then, with a grand swoop of his hand and a slight bow, the leprechaun said, Farewell, my laddie. Good luck, I leave ya. Finnegan wasted no time getting started. He gave the wee man a nod and then set out to find his fortune. He knew he'd have to hurry if he wanted to find the pot of gold in time. He ran down one hill and hiked up over the next to where he thought the rainbow had ended. But when he got there, he was surprised to find out that the rainbow was further out still. I could have sworn that this was where the rainbow ended, Finnegan mused. But now I see that I was mistaken. For the end is not here, but over by those boulders instead. He quickened his pace, but found that the closer he got to the boulders, the further away the rainbow seemed to be. By now the colors on the rainbow were beginning to fade quickly, and Finnegan knew that his time was running out. Again, he looked at the rainbow to try to pinpoint its location, but this time as he did so, he could see the faint glimmer of something gold shining there at the rainbow's end. I see it! Finnegan cried out. I found the pot of gold! No, if I can only reach it in time! Finnegan ran toward the gold as fast as his legs could carry him. But by the time he was within an arm's reach of it, the rainbow had faded completely away and nothing but a small four-leaf clover remained, marking the exact place where the pot of gold had been. It was then that Finnegan realized that he'd been outwitted, for true to his word, t'was not the gold that the leprechaun had moved, but the end of the rainbow instead. And although he'd been tricked out of finding the pot of gold, Finnegan knew that the leprechaun had indeed left him a bit of good luck. I hope you enjoyed our story today. See you next time.